I am setting up my Dillon 550B to reload 32 Auto. This is a factory made 32 Auto. And for comparison purposes, I have a 45 ACP and a 22 long rifle. After talking to other reloaders who are experienced with reloading 32 Auto, I learned that powder charges for the 32 Auto are typically in the 1.9 to 2.0 grains range. These are very small charges, even for handgun loads. If you're off by 0.1 grain when reloading 5.5 grains of powder, you're off by less than 2%. However, if you are loading 1.9 grains, you'd be off by more than 5%. While it's always important to have accurate loads, the margin of error becomes more critical when reloading small charges. People buy the Arredondo powder bar for one of two reasons, stopping powder leakage, or achieving more accurate charges for the smaller calibers. This video is about installing the Arredondo powder bar to achieve more accurate and consistent charges. Regarding powder leakage, let's take a close look at an example of powder leakage. As you can see in these two images, powder is leaking between the spacer and powder bar. The way I solved the powder leakage problem was by calling Dylan, who sent to me a new, slightly thicker spacer at no charge. The new spacer solved the problem. Therefore, I recommend contacting Dylan first to see if a different spacer can solve your issue before buying a new powder bar. Regarding more accurate charges, the Unique Tech website states the following regarding the Arredondo powder bar. These powder drop slides are customized exclusively for Unique Tech to allow even smaller powder drops than the standard Arredondo powder drop slide. They will meter down to 0.7 grains with Winchester 231, and they meter very small powder drops more accurately than the Dillon Extra Small Powder Bar. Since I am setting up to reload 32 Auto, I purchased the Arredondo powder bar from Unique Tech in hopes of achieving more accurate and consistent charges. The Arredondo powder bar from Unique Tech comes with the Unique Tech micrometer already installed. You'll need the Arredondo powder bar, which Arredondo calls a powder drop slide. I purchased mine from UniqueTech.com. Their URL can be seen in the video description. As mentioned earlier, the one from Unique Tech comes with a micrometer already installed. Please note the Arredondo powder bar can replace the Dillon small and extra small powder bars, but it cannot replace the Dillon large powder bar. You'll also need a 5 32nd Allen wrench, a 3 8 wrench, either open or closed in, calipers to measure the thickness of the powder bars, pencil paper to record measurements, and a sanding block and a C clamp to hold it. Why a sanding block? The Arredondo is thicker than the Dillon small and extra small powder bars. That is how it stops leakage. However, if it is too thick, it will make it difficult to operate the press. Therefore, we may need to reduce the powder bar's thickness in order to operate the press smoothly. We do this by sanding the bottom of the powder bar. You need to be aware that if too much is sanded off, you will create a powder leakage and you have ruined the powder bar. The steps we will follow are determine how tight a fit there is between the Arredondo powder bar and the Dillon spacer. Measure the thickness of both the Dillon powder bar and the Arredondo powder bar. Sand the Arredondo powder bar to its desired thickness and then install the Arredondo powder bar. To begin our measurements, we first completely empty the powder hopper. Since I am setting up a new caliber, I'm starting with an empty hopper. Then we're going to use the Allen key and wrench to loosen the bolt that holds the bell crank. And we're going to loosen it one full turn. Then we're going to pull the bell crank away from the powder measure such that the white nylon square comes out of the powder bar and we remove the Dillon powder bar. Then we take the area down the powder bar and insert it into the powder hopper. Well, as you can see, 
The LED diamond powder bar is so thick that I cannot completely insert it. Therefore, I am going to have to reduce its thickness by sanding it. And if the white square comes off, it's easily put back on the pen when we reinsert the powder bar. And I'll intentionally leave it out for now so that we can see how to put it back on when we reinstall the powder bar. To give us a reference, we're going to take our calipers and take three thickness measurements of both the Dillon powder bar or the RE Dando powder bar. All right, this is 355. And 355. And 35. Well, it's fluctuating. Um, it's stabilized at 355. Now, three measurements of the Aridondo powder bar. This is three six zero This is three six two and three six two. This gives us our starting point, of course, and I do not go past these numbers point. We, of course, do not want to make the RE Dino powder bar be thinner than the Dillon. And if we were installing the RE Dino powder bar to stop a powder leakage, we would not sand it to the same thickness of the, as the Dillon. We would make it slightly thicker. As you can see, I've got my sanding block attached to my workbench. On this side, I have a piece of medium grade sandpaper. And on this side, I have fine grade. I'm going to start off with the medium grade. If that becomes too coarse, I'm going to switch to fine grade. But regardless, when I'm done, I want to use a fine grade to make sure that the bottom is nice and smooth. Probably heard the old adage, remove a little, measure, remove a little, measure and repeat until the desired thickness is achieved. Because if you remove too much, you can't put it back. Look at how I'm going to hold it. My micrometer is actually thicker than the powder bar. So if I held it here, I'd actually be sanding the micrometer. So I have to hold it in such a way that the micrometer is hanging off the edge. Also, the part of the powder bar that moves, if you don't hold it as you sand, it's just going to get pushed up and never get sanded. So as you sand, you're going to have to hold it down in order that it gets sanded evenly with the rest. As I sand, I'm going to stop frequently and measure with both the calibers and see how well it sits in the powder bar. I'm going to compare my measurements to the measurements we took earlier. So let's get started sanding.
I'm noticing that as I insert it into the powder bar, I'm getting some scrape marks here. And I have to keep an eye out on that because I made the assumption that the powder bar would not be too wide for the hopper, but only too thick. So I have to keep an eye out on that to see if I need to take some off the edge. And it looks like I've taken off between one and two thousandths of an inch off the bottom. And if you look closely here, you can see where I wasn't paying too good of attention and I actually started sanding the micrometer. This part of the powder bar never really goes into the powder measure, so it'll be okay for me to hold it further out because I don't need this sanded because as you work the powder measure, this part really does not go all the way in. So at this point, let's see if we have a fit here. It is going in further, but still, still really tight, especially at the point where the movable part begins. That's why we got to make sure that as we sand, we need to make sure we sand this part. Otherwise, it'll stay too thick and the measure won't go in. All right, we're going to take some more measurements. Okay, about two thousandths of an inch have been removed from this end. Same here. And actually at this point, it, it's more than, let me make sure I've got it right. more than two thousandths of an inch. So let's take a take the powder measure, leave the bell crank out of the way, and see how smoothly it goes in. Now as I go in, I want to make if I'm not careful and I misalign it, then this edge will get caught on the uh, um, hopper. And again, if this is down too low or up too high as I push it, it's going to get caught on the measure. So I just want to hold it here so it'll go in. And let's get a feel. All right, that's, let's compare that to the Dillon. And that's very easy to work, but that doesn't mean that's where we want it. So this is snugger, but workable. So if I were installing this to stop a powder leakage, I'll probably stop right here. 
So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to run this across the fine grit paper to get to smooth it all across. I'm going to brush it off. Then I'm going to take a can of compressed air and spray it out because the last thing we want is little bits of plastic mixing in with either the gears or our powder. Now let's check it one more, one more time. Yeah, that's a good that's a good fit. I'm gonna stop here. Right. So next thing we're gonna do is install the powder bar into the powder measure. Now that we have the Ariadondo powder bar to the correct thickness, let's go ahead and install into the powder measure. If you recall earlier when we were removing the Dillon powder bar, the white nut fell out. So we'll go ahead and install it. We'll install the powder bar. First, let's push the bell crank out of the way. Insert the powder bar. Now remember the part that moves, let's keep it even with the rest of the powder bar. Otherwise it's gonna block it going in. Once the groove is, is exposed, let's go ahead and put the white nut in it. And we'll raise the bell crank, push in the powder bar. What we're going to do is drop the pin into the opening. Now we want to tighten the bell crank bolt. If you recall, we loosened it one full turn, so let's tighten it one full turn. Now we'll remove this piece from the old powder bar, insert it into the new. And we'll check operation. Seems to be working fine. We now have our Ariadondo powder bar properly installed in the powder measure. So I hope this video has been useful to you and thank you for watching.